Hi, my name's Matt. I'm an optometrist working in the hospital at the Liverpool Royal University Hospital. I'm doing a discussion workshop on the detection and management of glaucoma using OCT. And really what I'm trying to show is that there's lots of tests that you can do in your armory of managing and detecting glaucoma. Um, but I'm trying to show that OCT is a, is a useful um, test that you can amalgamate with other tests such as visual fields, looking at the nerve, um, not only in detecting glaucoma, um, but also managing it. This is a really hot topic and I think it's somewhere that's going to go with time to come. I think it's certainly a place to watch. I think the best piece of advice that I can give is that if you've genuinely got glaucoma, it's going to affect the neuroretinal rim, the retinal nerve fiber layer, and the ganglion cell layer. So putting it all together. Because if you've got an, an abnormal neuroretinal rim, but a normal retinal nerve fiber layer, and a normal ganglion cell layer, well, is that really glaucoma? And what if you've got a normal neuroretinal rim, but an abnormal retinal component, so retinal nerve fiber layer and ganglion cell layer, could it be suggestive of some kind of vascular pathology, such as a non-arteritic ischemic optic neuropathy? We know that glaucoma is progressive in nature. It only gets worse, it never gets any better. And therefore comparing last time versus today is really, really important. I think, as I say, looking at the neuroretinal rim, retinal nerve fiber layer, and ganglion cell layer, if you've got infratemporal loss of the neuroretinal rim, you're gonna have infratemporal loss of the retinal nerve fiber layer, and you're gonna have in infratemporal loss of the ganglion cell layer. And that's consistent with glaucoma. So I think it's all about putting it together. The black line is what we've got today. It looks all in the green, it looks healthy, not much to shout about. The green line is the normative population for this database. I have quite a systematic approach to how I look at OCT. And I look at the neuroretinal rim first, and then I look at the retinal nerve fiber layer. Now this is the retin retin retinal nerve fiber layer, and essentially, once again, it gives a similar plot. It gives that pie chart, which you show your patient, and say, oh, this looks really nice, it looks great, green means good. But for me, I'm looking at this black line again, and it's all up and down, it's all up and down, and the reason why that is, is because it's influenced by blood vessels. At these different peaks here, that's where you're encountering a blood vessel. Okay, so it's going to over-exaggerate what the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness is. But nonetheless, it's all in the green. It all looks really rather good. I think OCT brings a new dimension to examining patients. And I'm not saying, as I said, I'm not saying that it replaces anything, but it adds. And if you've got a scan from 12 months ago with a borderline pressure and you say, you know what, John, I'll just keep a watchful eye on you and I'll see you back in 12 months. And they come back and there's demonstrable evidence of progression. So the neuroretinal rim's got a little bit worse, as the retinal nerve fiber layer and the ganglion cell layer, but the field's normal. Well, are we picking up pre-perimetric glaucoma? Are we picking up the early signs of glaucoma to a point whereby it's not manifesting itself in the visual field functionally? OCT is bringing that, that characteristic that it could be picking up disease earlier than what we could if we were just looking at the back of the eye by itself. So I think, as I say, it's not just about looking at the OCT by itself, because let's say, for instance, the pressure's 10, but the OCT's changing a little bit, and the visual fields are normal, and they have no risk factors for glaucoma. Well, could it be a case that the OCT is maybe got a little bit of variability compared to last time? And therefore, it's just kind of saying to you, well, this patient could be at risk, and therefore I'm gonna see them in X months rather than Y months. I think it's all about putting it together. And as I say, so let's say for instance, uh, a patient comes in with a pressure of 10, for instance, and the nerve looks a little bit funny, as do the associated factors. So the retinal nerve fiber layer and the ganglion cell layer. Pressure's 10, they've got no risk factors for developing glaucoma. I might say, you know what, this could be static. It could be a case that it never gets any worse. And based upon some of the studies that we know about, so in particular the advanced uh, the collaborative normal tension glaucoma study, we know that a lot of patients won't get any worse with normal pressures. So what I'm trying to say here is that sometimes OCT is, is a good starting point, but it's not kind of, it, it's not the be all and end all in, in, uh, in starting treatment. Going on to the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness map, it looks very different compared to what we saw in case two. And essentially, taking it to start off with, we've got this nice wedge defect that extends all the way back to the optic nerve. But not only what we've got there, we've got the baseline here, and we've got today's scan here, okay? And this is a map that basically compares baseline and today and puts it into one picture graph 
representation. Red means a little bit thicker, green means a little bit thinner, and white means really, really thin. And essentially what we're seeing is we saw neuronal rim loss in the infratemporal aspect, and we're also seeing infratemporal loss in the neuronal rim, in the retinal nerve fiber layer now, okay, which corresponds with that wedge defect. Ganglion cell layer. So you can see how we've got that systematic approach. Once again, we've got this infratemporal bright patch here. Red wants, it's same as before. Red means a little bit thicker, green means a little bit thinner, and white means really, really changing on the thin side. But if you look at this point here, and look at this point here, you can see that something's been lost there compared, the, compared to the two examinations. And then this one's a new one for us. This is inner retinal layers. This is the combination of the retinal nerve fiber layer and the ganglion cell layer all squished into one map. Once again, we can see that wedge defect. It's a little bit more tricky to see, but there's certainly something going on there. And once again, in the comparison between baseline and today, once again, you've got that lovely arc that we expect to see in progressive glaucoma. So we've got infratemporal loss that is seemingly progressive because it's in the neuronal rim, the retinal nerve fiber layer, and the ganglion cell layer. So we've got structural loss in the infratemporal. Where would we expect our functional loss on visual fields to be? Supranasal, perfect. And surprise, surprise, this patient has got a new supranasal defect. We said this one I didn't really buy that much, but this one I really do buy today. He's got that infratemporal loss, which has manifest itself structurally as a supranasal defect functionally. So, right eye. You think it's probably progressive. Agreed? Fine, few. At least I can go home and think that I've done an all right job.